Welcome to Level 10 of Verbal Advantage. I know how much time and effort you've been putting in, listening, reviewing, and working hard to absorb all the challenging words and information I've been presenting. And you deserve a big verbal pat on the back for making it this far. Believe me, your assiduousness will pay off down the line, for you will find the world opening up to you in wonderful, unexpected ways through your newfound insight into words. I am also honored and delighted that you have stuck with the program and decided to accompany me on the final leg of this journey into the ethereal regions of the language. Only the most intrepid verbal explorers have the courage and the stamina to climb this high. Only the most stalwart and redoubtable ones have the determination to go on when the path becomes rocky and the air grows thin. We are now going to ascend to the acme of the English vocabulary. Although I can't say we will boldly go where no man has gone before, I can say we will boldly go where 95 out of every 100 people have never gone. For the words you are about to learn are known by fewer than one out of every 10 educated adults. So be bold, be brave, step lively, and above all, stay awake. The last level was tricky, but this one is downright treacherous. If you want to reach the peak of verbal advantage, then you must give this final part of the journey your full attention. Are you ready? All right. Follow me carefully now as we traverse the first ten keywords in level ten. Word one Jejun. J E J U N E. Dull, uninteresting, or unsatisfying. Devoid of nourishment, substance, or significance. Synonyms of jejun include flat, stale, arid, insipid, and vapid, word 37 of level 8. Jejun comes from the Latin jejunus, fasting, hungry, barren, dry. In classical Latin, j is pronounced like y. From the same source comes the anatomical term jejunum, spelled J E J U N U M. The jejunum is the middle section of the small intestine, between the duodenum and the ileum. The jejunum took that name, the dictionaries tell us, because in post mortem dissections it was found barren of digestive contents and therefore believed to be empty after death. The adjective jejun was once used to mean hungry, fasting, without food. But that sense is obsolete, and in modern usage, jejun is used figuratively to mean barren of interest, dull and unsatisfying, devoid of nourishment, substance, or significance. A jejun diet lacks nourishment. Jejun food is tasteless and unsatisfying. A jejun idea or a jejun method lacks appeal because it is devoid of substance or significance. A jejun movie or jejun novel is dull, uninteresting, insipid. If you look up jejun in a current dictionary, you will also see another definition of the word youthful, childish, immature, puerile. As jejun behavior or a jejun response to a serious question. Whence comes this sense of the word, which is so clearly unconnected to the root meaning, barren of substance or appeal? For an answer, let's turn to William Sapphire, the language maven of the New York Times, who writes a column for that paper's Sunday magazine called On Language. On October 16, 1994, Sapphire reported that he had queried Jacques Barzin, one of the world's foremost authorities on English usage, about this extended sense of the word. And the venerable professor responded that the meaning youthful, childish for jejun has got into the dictionaries only as a concession to the misusers. According to Sapphire, the original meaning of jejun, empty of food, meager, Led to its modern sense of dull, insipid. Probably because the word sounded like juvenile, it picked up a meaning of puerile, childish, 
which, Sapphire asserts, is the way it is most commonly used today. Sapphire then poses the eternal question regarding capricious usage. Should we stand with the prescriptivists, as Barzin suggests, and hold fast to the proper meaning? Or do we go along with the language slobs, adopting as correct a mistake merely because it is so frequently made? Here's how Sapphire answers his own question. At a certain point, what people mean when they use a word becomes its meaning. We should resist its adoption, pointing out the error for years. Mockery helps. If the meaning persists, though, it is senseless to ignore the new sense. I say jejun means puerile now, Sapphire concludes. I disagree with Mr. Sapphire and stand with Mr. Barzan on the side of reserving jejun for the meaning devoid of nourishment, substance, or significance. That is my crotchet, and I'm proud of it. However, although few people know the word jejun, I will concede that many of those who do now use it to mean childish or immature. And therefore, as Mr. Sapphire suggests, resistance to this change in meaning has become effete, and further mockery of it may be jejun, which you may take as meaning either dull, insipid, or juvenile, immature. Welcome to the war of words, my verbally advantaged friend. What will be your strategy for this controversial word, jejun? Word 2. Paucity. P-A-U-C-I-T-Y. An insufficiency. Scarcity. Especially a serious or extreme one. A dire lack. Synonyms of paucity include dearth, word 12 of level 3, shortage, deficiency, and the challenging word exiguity, spelled E-X-I-G-U-I-T-Y. The noun exiguity and the adjective exiguous come through the Latin exiguous, small, scanty, from exigere, to measure out, demand. Exiguous means extremely meager or scanty. An exiguity is an extremely small or scanty amount. Exiguity and paucity are close synonyms and are virtually interchangeable. Paucity comes through the Latin paucitas, fewness, scarcity, from paucus, few. In modern usage, paucity may mean simply a scarcity or insufficiency, as a paucity of words, but it often suggests a serious or extreme insufficiency, a dire lack. We speak of a paucity of supplies, a paucity of information, a paucity of funds, a paucity of natural resources in the region, or a paucity of orders leading to the decision to take a product off the market. Antonyms of paucity include superabundance, superfluity, and plethora. Word 3. Minatory. M-I-N-A-T-O-R-Y. Threatening. Menacing. Having a threatening or menacing aspect or nature. Minatory and the even more unusual adjective menacious, spelled M-I-N-A-C-I-O-U-S, are synonymous and may be used interchangeably. Both words come from the same source, the Latin minari, to threaten, and are related to the word menace. Minatory clouds have a threatening aspect, indicating heavy rain or snow. Minatory people are menacing by nature. A minatory look is a menacing look. Minatory words are threatening words. Word 4. Putative. P-U-T-A-T-I-V-E. Supposed. Reputed commonly considered or regarded as such, deemed to be so but not proved. Antonyms of putative include certain, definite, unquestionable, indisputable, indubitable, incontrovertible, 
and irrefragable. Putative comes from the Latin putare, to consider, believe, think, suppose. That which is putative is commonly thought to be so, generally considered true but not conclusively proved. We speak of someone's putative parents, the putative perpetrator of a crime, a putative leader or a person with putative authority, meaning the person believed to be in control, and a putative discovery, meaning a discovery generally attributed to someone without proof. We might also speak of Zsa, Zsa Gabor's putative age, the age she is commonly thought to be, but who can say for sure? Word 5. Lucubration. L-U-C-U-B-R-A-T-I-O-N. Nocturnal labor. Study, writing, or work done late at night. Lucubration comes from the Latin lucubrare, to work by candlelight. The corresponding adjective, lucubratory, means literally done by candlelight, hence pertaining to nocturnal study or labor. The corresponding verb to lucubrate means to work, study, or write into the wee hours. To use a vernacular expression, lucubration means burning the midnight oil. College students often engage in lucubration, and meeting a deadline for an important project may require an 11th hour bout of diligent lucubration. In current usage, the verb to lucubrate may also be used to mean to compose with laborious effort, and especially to write in a scholarly or pedantic fashion as a professor of political science who lucubrates abstrusely from her ivory tower. The noun lucubration has also come to be used of anything produced by laborious study or effort, especially an elaborate, pedantic, or pretentious piece of writing. Word 6. Troglodyte. T-R-O-G-L-O-D-Y-T-E a cave dweller, also a person who lives or behaves in a primitive manner, or who lives in seclusion. The corresponding adjective is troglodytic, pertaining to or characteristic of a troglodyte. Troglodyte comes from a Greek word meaning one who creeps into holes. In modern usage, troglodyte may be used in three ways. It may refer specifically to a prehistoric cave dweller, as the Neanderthals were troglodytes. In a broader sense, troglodyte may refer to anyone who lives in a primitive, degenerate, or debased manner or condition, or who is primitive, brutish, and displays a crude lack of sophistication regarding intellectual or cultural matters. Simone couldn't talk to her co-workers about the novels, plays, concerts, and exhibits she enjoyed, because all the people she worked with were couch potatoes, soap opera junkies, mall rats, and troglodytes. Troglodyte may also refer to a person who chooses to live in seclusion, a hermit, recluse. The billionaire Howard Hughes was a notorious and notoriously eccentric troglodyte. Would you like two challenging synonyms for a person who lives in seclusion? Try anchorite, spelled A-N-C-H-O-R-I-T-E, and eremite, spelled E-R-E-M-I-T-E. -E. Word 7. Aleatory. A-L-E-A-T-O-R-Y. Depending on luck, chance, or on some contingent event. Hence, uncertain, unpredictable. In law, an aleatory contract is an agreement whose conditions depend on a contingency, an uncertain event. An aleatory sale is one whose completion depends on the outcome of some uncertain event. Aleatory music leaves certain sounds up to the performer or up to chance. Aleatory comes from the Latin aleator, 
a gamester, thrower of dice, crapshooter, which comes in turn from alea, a game of dice. Aleatory means literally depending upon the throw of the dice. In current usage, aleatory may mean gambling or pertaining to gambling, as Las Vegas is the mecca of aleatory activity, but the word is probably more often used to mean depending on luck or chance, uncertain, unpredictable. Aleatory investments are risky investments. An aleatory business needs good luck to succeed. Word 8. Farrago. F-A-R-R-A-G-O. A mixture, especially a confused or jumbled mixture. Farrago may also be pronounced farrago. Synonyms of farrago include conglomeration, medley, mishmash, hodgepodge, miscellany, potpourri, pastiche, and salmagundi. Farrago comes from a Latin word meaning mixed fodder for animals, a jumbled assortment of grains. In modern usage, farrago may be used literally or figuratively of any mixture, especially a confused, jumbled, or miscellaneous assortment of things. A computer is an amazing tool for storing or sorting through a farrago of information. Every day, the psychiatrist listens to an astonishing farrago of hopes, fears, dreams, wishes, doubts, and resentments. The corresponding adjective is faraginous, mixed, jumbled, miscellaneous, heterogeneous, as a faraginous collection of notes or ideas. Word 9. Sinusure. C-Y-N-O-S-U-R-E. A center of attention or interest. Focal point. Sinusure comes from the Greek kunosura, a dog's tail, from kunos, a dog. From the corresponding Greek adjective, kunikos, we inherit the English adjective, cynical, which means literally, like a dog. Pardon me if I digress for a moment, but the words cynical, cynic, and cynicism have an interesting history that I'd like to share with you. Cynicism was a school of ancient Greek philosophy founded by Antisthenes of Athens, a pupil of Socrates. The chief doctrines of the cynics, says the Century Dictionary, were that virtue is the only good, that the essence of virtue is self-control, and that pleasure is an evil if sought for its own sake. They were accordingly characterized by an ostentatious contempt for riches, arts, science, and amusements. The most famous exponent of cynicism was Diogenes of Sinope, who took cynicism to an extreme. In his disdain for human selfishness and his pursuit of a simple life, Diogenes is said to have slept in a tub, thrown away his only utensil, a cup, when he saw a peasant drinking from his hands, and wandered through the streets at midday with a lantern, telling those who asked what he was doing that he was searching for an honest man. According to the third edition of the American Heritage Dictionary, Diogenes is also said to have performed such actions as barking in public, urinating on the leg of a table, and masturbating on the street. I'm not paraphrasing, that was a quotation. Apparently as a result of this dog-like behavior, Diogenes was nicknamed kunos or kuon, meaning a dog, and the nickname was extended to the philosophy of cynicism and its adherents. Today, when we call people cynical, we mean they are scornful or skeptical of people's motives, or that they believe human beings are motivated only by selfishness. In short, that people are dogs. You will recall that our keyword, sinusure, comes from the Greek kunosura, a dog's tail. When spelled with a capital C, sinusure refers to the constellation Ursa Minor, or to Polaris, the North Star, also called the Pole Star which is part of this constellation. 
The North Star is the outermost star in the handle of the Little Dipper, which the Greeks apparently perceived as a dog's tail. Since ancient times, the North Star has been used as a navigational guide. Thus, sinusure first came to mean anything that guides or directs, and then came to mean anything or anyone that is the center of attention or interest. Word 10. Badinage. B-A-D-I-N-A-G-E. Banter. Playful teasing talk. Good-natured joking or gently mocking conversation. Synonyms of badinage include repartee, raillery, and persiflage, P-E-R-S-I-F-L-A-G-E. The words banter, badinage, persiflage, and raillery all suggest good-humored jesting, says Webster's New International Dictionary, 2nd edition. Banter implies light, playful mocking or ridicule. Badinage suggests more trifling and delicate teasing or jesting. Persiflage refers to frivolous or flippant talk or writing. And raillery implies playful mockery that is keener and often more sarcastic. Let's review the 10 key words you've just learned. Listen carefully to the following questions. After each one, decide whether the correct answer is yes or no. Can a person's writing be jejun? Yes, jejun means dull, uninteresting, or unsatisfying, devoid of nourishment, substance, or significance. If there is a paucity of evidence against a defendant, does that suggest the prosecuting attorney's case may be weak? Yes, a paucity is an insufficiency, scarcity, especially a serious or extreme one, a dire lack. Would you like to receive a minatory letter from a lawyer? No, I don't think you would. Minatory means threatening, menacing, having a threatening or menacing aspect or nature. Are a company's putative financial assets the assets it is commonly thought to have? Yes, putative means supposed, reputed, commonly considered or regarded as such, deemed to be so but not proved. Does lucubration mean the act of making investments that turn a profit? No, lucubration means nocturnal labor, study, writing, or work done late at night. Would you like your daughter to marry a troglodyte? No, to answer yes, you'd have to be a troglodyte yourself. A troglodyte is a cave dweller also a person who lives or behaves in a primitive manner, or who lives in seclusion. Is the success of an aleatory enterprise guaranteed? No, aleatory means depending on luck, chance, or on some contingent event, hence uncertain, unpredictable. Can someone have a farrago of thoughts or feelings? Yes, a farrago is a mixture, especially a confused or jumbled mixture. Is a sinusure something trivial that's likely to be ignored? No, a sinusure is a center of attention or interest, focal point. Do good friends ever engage in badinage? Yes, they often do. Badinage means banter, playful, teasing talk, good-natured joking or gently mocking conversation. That concludes the review for this section. Let's hit the verbal trail again and return to the vocabulary for the next 10 keywords in level 10. Word 11. Hieratic. 
H I E R A T I C. Priestly, pertaining to or used by priests, reserved for holy or sacred uses. Synonyms of hieratic include clerical, ministerial, pastoral, ecclesiastical, and sacerdotal. S A C E R D O T A L. The prefix hiero, spelled H I E R O, and often shortened to H I E R, comes from Greek and means sacred, holy, divine. This prefix appears in several interesting English words. The word hierocracy, spelled H I E R O C R A C Y, means rule by priests, ecclesiastical government. The word hierarch, spelled H I E R A R C H, means a person who rules over sacred things, a high priest, and also a person who occupies a high position in a hierarchy. The word hierarchy may denote religious rule or the organization of a religious order into ranks and grades, as the Roman Catholic hierarchy. But today, hierarchy commonly refers to any organized body or system strictly arranged in order of rank, power, or class. Hieratic means pertaining to priests or to the priesthood, as hieratic vestments or hieratic rituals. Hieratic may also designate a form of ancient Egyptian writing, in which the traditional hieroglyphics took on a more cursive or flowing form. The hieratic style was opposed to the demotic style. Demotic, spelled D E M O T I C, comes from the Greek demos, the people, and means of the people, popular. From the same source comes democracy, which means literally rule by the people, popular government. The words demotic and vernacular are synonymous. In ancient Egypt, the demotic style of writing was used by the people, the laity. The hieratic style was used by the priesthood. In modern usage, demotic may refer to speech or writing that is vernacular, popular. Word twelve, saturnine. S a t u r n i n e. Gloomy, sullen, or somber in appearance, manner, or temperament. Synonyms of saturnine include grave, melancholy, morose, taciturn, and phlegmatic. Word thirty-three of level nine. Saturnine means literally of or pertaining to the planet Saturn. In astrology, it means born under the influence of Saturn. Apparently, this is not a happy influence. For today, Saturnine is most often used figuratively to mean having a gloomy, sullen, or somber appearance or disposition. Antonyms of Saturnine include mercurial, word twenty-seven of level eight, word thirteen, execrate, e x e c r a t e, to denounce vehemently, declare hateful or detestable. Also, to loathe, abhor, detest utterly. The verbs to curse and damn mean to denounce violently, specifically to call down evil upon out of a desire for revenge. Execrate, which by derivation means to put under a curse, suggests a furious or passionate denunciation, prompted by intense loathing. The opposition execrates everything she stands for. Citizens angry over the rise in violent crime gathered in the park to hear speakers execrate drug pushers and gangs. When the dictator couldn't execute his enemies, he execrated them. The corresponding adjective is execrable, which means abominable, abhorrent, loathsome, utterly detestable. The corresponding noun execration means a vehement denunciation or the act of execrating, declaring hateful or detestable. 
Word 14. Vitiate. V I T I A T E. To corrupt, spoil, ruin, contaminate, impair the quality of, make faulty or impure. Also, to weaken morally, defile, debase. Vitiate comes from the Latin vitium, a fault, vice. That which is vitiated may be literally faulty, defective, or spoiled, or it may be corrupt in a moral sense, vice ridden, debased. Illogical thought can vitiate an argument, editorial interpolation can vitiate a manuscript. Noisome smog vitiates the air. A pernicious habit can vitiate a person's life. In law, a vitiated contract or a vitiated claim has been corrupted or violated and is therefore invalid, rendered ineffective. The corresponding noun is vitiation, corruption, spoliation, the act of vitiating, or the state. Word 15. Venial. V E N I A L. Excusable. Forgivable. Pardonable. Able to be overlooked. Venial comes from the Latin venia, grace, indulgence, and means excusable, forgivable, minor or trivial enough to be overlooked. A venial offense can be pardoned. A venial error can be overlooked. A venial insult can be forgiven. And venial negligence can be excused. In theology, venial is opposed to mortal. Venial sins are committed without full awareness or consent, and therefore are pardonable. Mortal sins exclude one from grace and cause the death of the soul. Do you remember the word venal, keyword 14 of level 9? Be careful not to get venal confused with venial. Venal, spelled V E N A L, means corruptible, capable of being bribed or bought off. Venial, spelled V E N I A L, word 16. Risible. R I S I B L E. Provoking or capable of provoking, laughter. Synonyms of risible include laughable, amusing, ludicrous, hilarious, ridiculous, and droll. Word 36 of level 5. Risible, ridicule, and ridiculous all come from the Latin ridere, to laugh at. To ridicule is to laugh at, make fun of. Ridiculous means extremely laughable, preposterous, absurd. And risible means provoking or capable of provoking laughter, amusing, as a risible thought, a risible face, a risible speech. When Ted's supervisor told him that his risible remarks during staff meetings no longer would be tolerated, Ted decided that if his supervisor couldn't see that a staff meeting was one of the most risible forms of human interaction, then he would simply quit and take his sense of humor elsewhere. Word 17. Lionize. L I O N I Z E. To treat a person as a celebrity or as an object of great interest or importance. One meaning of the noun a lion. Is an important, famous, or especially interesting person. He is a lion in his profession does not mean he is ferocious, but that he is of great interest or importance. A lion of industry is a prominent industrialist. A literary lion is an important, celebrated writer. The verb to lionize means either to treat a person as a celebrity or as an object of great interest or importance. If you want to be respected by millions, win a Nobel Prize. If you want to be lionized by millions, become a movie star. Despite all their scandals and foibles, the members of England's royal family are lionized more often than they are vilified. Word 18. Contretemps. C O N 
T R E T E M P S. An embarrassing, awkward, unexpected situation or event, a sudden mishap or hitch, an inopportune occurrence. In colloquial terms, a contretemps is something that happens in the wrong place at the wrong time, which leaves you high and dry. There was a contretemps at the party last night when John got soused and started yelling at his wife. The company can survive a contretemps, but it must avoid a scandal at all costs. Contretemps comes from French and, by derivation, means something against the time or out of time. Hence, something unexpected or inopportune. The Oxford English Dictionary shows that when the word entered English in the late seventeenth century, it applied to the sport of fencing, and meant a pass or thrust made at a wrong or inopportune moment. That meaning disappeared by the eighteenth century, and since then, contretemps has meant something unexpected that occurs at an inopportune moment and creates an awkward or embarrassing situation. Because it is an unusual word, not often used in conversation, its pronunciation has never been fully anglicized. In other words, made to conform to English ways. Current dictionaries generally prefer the half-anglicized contretemps. The plural is spelled the same but pronounced contretemps. Contretemps may vary in severity, but they are never on the same scale as a scandal or a crisis. Contretemps are the common stuff of newspaper stories, for they occur frequently in politics and business. Sitcoms and romantic comedies also rely on contretemps to generate laughs and move the plot. The workplace usually is good for one or two juicy contretemps a month, and if you like to socialize or get together with members of your family, then chances are you already are intimately acquainted with that utterly unexpected. Embarrassing and awkward situation known as the contretemps. Word nineteen. Rodomontade. R o d o m o n t a d e. Arrogant boasting or bragging. Equally challenging synonyms of rodomontade include bluster, braggadocio, vainglory, gasconade. Fanfarinade and jactitation. Rodomontade comes from Rodomont, a boastful warrior king in Boyardo's Orlando Inamorato, and Ariosto's Orlando Furioso. The name comes from the Italian Rodomonte, which means literally one who rolls away mountains. By derivation, Rodomontade is the arrogant boasting of someone who claims he can move. Word twenty. Hebetude, H E B E T U D E, stupidity, dullness, obtuseness, lethargy of mind or spirit. The corresponding verb is hebetate, to make or become dull, blunt, or obtuse. The corresponding adjective is hebetudinous, dull, stupid, obtuse. Hebetude, hebetate. And hebetudinous all come ultimately from the Latin hebes, blunt, dull. They are great words to use superciliously when you want to be haughty and make someone else look dumb. But don't tell anyone I told you that. Let's review the ten key words you've just learned. Listen carefully to the following statements and decide whether each one is true or false. Hieratic writings are priestly, sacred writings. True. Hieratic means priestly, pertaining to or used by priests, reserved for holy or sacred uses. A Saturnine person is cheerful and optimistic. False. Saturnine means gloomy, sullen, or somber in appearance, manner, or temperament. When you execrate someone, you forgive a fault or offense. 
false. To execrate means to denounce vehemently, declare hateful or detestable. Also to loathe, abhor, detest utterly. Smog can vitiate the air, and smoking can vitiate your body. True. To vitiate means to corrupt, spoil, ruin, contaminate, impair the quality of, make faulty or impure. Also, to weaken morally, defile, debase. A venial indiscretion is an inexcusable indiscretion. False. Venial means excusable, forgivable, pardonable, able to be overlooked. A risible statement is an unbelievable statement. False. A risible statement is amusing, laughable. Risible means provoking or capable of provoking laughter. Movie stars and pop musicians are often lionized in the media. True. To lionize means to treat a person as a celebrity or as an object of great interest or importance. A contretemps is a favorable or fortunate outcome. False. A contretemps is an embarrassing, awkward, unexpected situation or event, a sudden mishap or hitch, an inopportune occurrence. It's pleasant to listen to rhodomontade. False. Rhodomontade means arrogant boasting or bragging. Hebitude is the sign of a sharp mind. False. Hebitude means stupidity, dullness, obtuseness, lethargy of mind or spirit. That concludes the review for this section. Did you remember to keep track of your answers and calculate your score? To rouse you from your hebitude, let's take a moment to talk about fear. When fears are exaggerated or unnatural, they are known as phobias. Though it sounds as if it comes from psychology, the word phobia, spelled P-H-O-B-I-A, preceded the establishment of that science by almost a century. The first citation in the Oxford English Dictionary is from 1802, when the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge wrote, I have a perfect phobia of inns and coffee houses. Phobia comes from the Greek phobos, fear, dread, horror, flight. As a combining form, it can be joined with other elements to form a word meaning the fear, dread, or extreme dislike of something. The antonym of the combining form phobia is philia, spelled P-H-I-L-I-A from the Greek philane, to love. Bibliophilia is love of books. Bibliophobia is fear or hatred of them. For whatever you fear, there is or can be a phobia. Common phobias include claustrophobia, fear of enclosed space, and agoraphobia, fear of open space. Agoraphobia combines phobia, fear, with agora, a marketplace or public square in ancient Greece. You will recall that those fearful of strangers or foreigners, or of anything foreign or strange, suffer from xenophobia, word 19 of level 9. Xenophobia has a number of specific forms. Francophobia and Gallophobia mean fear of the French. Germanophobia is fear of the Germans. Japanophobia is fear of the Japanese. Grecophobia is fear of the Greeks. Russophobia is fear of the Russians. And Anglophobia is fear of the English. Among the many phobias with easily discernible meanings are bacteriophobia, fear of germs, demonophobia, fear of demons, pharmacophobia, fear of medicine or drugs, syphilophobia, fear of syphilis or fear that one is infected with it, pyrophobia, fear of fire, zoophobia, fear of animals, and neophobia, fear of anything new. 
More abstruse phobias include aeronosophobia, fear of airplanes, aviatophobia is fear of flying in them, cityophobia, fear or dread of food, ablutophobia, fear of bathing, sophophobia, fear of learning, allodoxophobia, fear of others' opinions, thanatophobia, fear of death, from the Greek thanatos, death, ataxiophobia, fear of disorder, dysmorphophobia, fear of deformity or anything misshapen, and dermatophobia, fear of skin. Don't say gimme skin to a dermatophobe. There are also plenty of thoroughly outrageous phobias. For example, phobiologists have identified dustophobia, also known as rupophobia, a dread of dirt, disabilophobia, fear of disrobing in front of someone, formed from disabile, word 43 of level 9, philomophobia, fear of kissing, and Dracula's hang-up, storophobia, fear of crucifixes. Then, of course, there's pantophobia, fear of everything. You word 21. Sanguine. S-A-N-G-U-I-N-E. Confident, cheerful, hopeful, optimistic. As you may recall from the discussion of phlegmatic, word 33 of level 9, in ancient physiology, there were four humors, or bodily fluids. Blood, phlegm, collar, also called yellow bile, and melancholy, also called black bile. Early physicians believed that a person's health and disposition were determined by the relative proportions of these humors. Sanguine originally meant having blood as the dominant humor in one's system, hence having a ruddy, healthy complexion and a warm temperament. Eventually, this sense evolved into the current meaning, confident, cheerfully optimistic. The words sanguine and sanguinary are sometimes confused because of their common derivation, the Latin sanguis, blood. Sanguinary means either bloody, accompanied by bloodshed and slaughter, or bloodthirsty, eager for bloodshed. Sanguine either means blood-colored, ruddy, red, as a sanguine complexion, or, more often, filled with the uplifting word 22. Dipnosophist. D-E-I-P N-O-S-O-P-H-I-S-T An adept conversationalist, especially one who enjoys conversing at the table. You'll need to check a hefty unabridged dictionary to find the unusual words dipnosophist, dipnosophistic, and dipnosophism, which come from the Greek depnon, a meal, and sophistes, a wise man. Like the word symposium, which means literally a drinking party, and comes from the title of a platonic dialogue, dipnosophist comes from the dipnosophistai of the Greek writer Athenaeus, in which he details the conversation of a group of learned men who are dining together. For your next symposium, whether you plan to cook a gourmet meal or have a potluck, try inviting a few dipnosophists to liven up the conversation. I have known many dipnosophists, and I am something of one myself, and in my book they fall into three categories. The preprandial dipnosophists, who excel at conversation over cocktails before dinner. The postprandial dipnosophists, who hit their stride and wax eloquent after the plates have been cleared away. And the vulgar dipnosophists, who talk incessantly through the meal, usually with their mouths full. Word 23. Frangible. F-R-A-N-G-I-B-L-E. Breakable. Fragile. Frail. Delicate. Easily damaged or destroyed. Fragile applies to something so delicately constructed that it is easily broken. Frangible adds to this the idea of a susceptibility to being broken even if the object in question is not inherently delicate. The solid steel of a car is frangible if struck by another car. 
the heart of a brave and sanguine person might be frangible in an especially sad and poignant situation. The unusual word friable, spelled F-R-I-A-B-L-E, means easily crumbled, crushed, or pulverized. Dried herbs are friable, as are the stiff... Word 24. Apodictic. A-P-O-D-I-C-T-I-C. Absolutely certain. Necessarily true. Proved or demonstrated beyond a shadow of a doubt. Synonyms of apodictic include incontestable, incontrovertible, and irrefragable. Apodictic is chiefly a technical term used in logic of a judgment that asserts its own necessity. Such judgments, cautions the Century Dictionary, may be false. Apodictic is a lovely word, so much more forceful and decisive than certain or true, yet I wonder what in life honestly can be called apodictic, absolutely certain, necessarily true. Can you think of anything that is unarguably apodictic? Perhaps only death and taxes. Word 25. Fulminate. F-U-L-M-I-N-A-T-E. To explode, especially to explode with invective and denunciations. To shout forth condemnation and censure. The verb to fulminate and the corresponding noun, fulmination, come through the Latin fulminare to strike with lightning, from fulmen, a stroke of lightning, thunderbolt. Fulminate was once used to mean to strike with lightning, but this sense is obsolete, and in modern usage, fulminate suggests the throwing of verbal thunderbolts, and fulmination suggests a thundering verbal explosion. The speaker fulminated against corruption and vice. The dispute between the two nations has not reached the point of war, but there have been fulminations from both. Word 26. Scarify. S-C-A-R-I-F-Y. To wound the feelings of. Make cutting remarks about. Distress by criticizing sharply. Synonyms of scarify include lacerate, word 35 of level 1, flay, castigate, vituperate, and excoriate, word 40 of level 9. The corresponding noun is scarification. The verbs to scarify and scare are similar in spelling and sound, but they are entirely unrelated in derivation and meaning. Scarify comes through Latin and Greek words meaning to scratch, ultimately from the Greek scarifos, a pencil or stylus. In modern usage, scarify has three senses, the first two literal and the third figurative. Scarify is used in medicine to mean to make a series of shallow cuts or punctures in the skin. Certain vaccinations are administered by scarification. Scarify is also used in agriculture to mean to cut into the ground, loosen or break up the soil either to aerate it or in preparation for planting. Out of these literal senses, which suggest scratching and scraping, scarify came to be used figuratively to mean to scratch with words. Hence, to wound the feelings of, make word 27. Hebdomadal. H-E-B-D-O-M-A-D-A-L. Weekly, pertaining to a week or seven-day period. The adjective hebdomadal and the corresponding noun, hebdomad, spelled H-E-B-D-O-M-A-D, come from the Latin and Greek words for the number seven. The noun hebdomad may mean a group of seven. For example, a seven-member commission or board is a hebdomad. Hebdomad may also mean a seven-day period, a week. The adjective hebdomadal means weekly. Hebdomadal duties are weekly duties. A hebdomadal... A Word 28. Divagate. D-I-V-A-G-A-T-E. To wander, ramble, or drift about.
Hence, to digress. The verb to divagate and the corresponding noun, divagation, come from the Latin divagari, to wander about, which comes in turn from dis, meaning apart, and wagari, to wander, ramble, roam. In modern usage, divagate is a grandiloquent synonym for wander or digress, and divagation is a loftier word for a digression or the act of wandering or rambling. You may divagate literally, as to spend a summer divagating across the country, or you may divagate figuratively. Leroy dreaded his 80-year-old mother's he- Word 29. Iatrogenic. I-A-T-R-O-G-E-N-I-C. Caused by medical examination or treatment. The word pathological which means pertaining to or caused by disease, is the antonym of iatrogenic. The word iatric, spelled I-A-T-R-I-C, means pertaining to medicine or medical doctors. The combining form iatro, spelled I-A-T-R-O, comes from the Greek iatros, a physician. In English, iatro means medical or medicine. The combining form genic, spelled G-E-N-I-C, means producing or generating. By derivation, that which is iatrogenic is produced by a medical doctor or generated by medical treatment. Iatrogenic is used of ailments, maladies, or symptoms caused by medical treatment, especially one caused by a drug or surgery. An iatrogenic disorder may be cause for a malpractice suit against the doctor whose treatment... Word 30. Tergiversation. T-E-R-G-I-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N. Desertion. Specifically, the act of deserting something to which one was previously loyal, such as a cause, a party, or a religious faith. Synonyms of tergiversation include abandonment and defection. The noun tergiversation and the corresponding verb tergiversate come from a Latin word meaning to turn one's back. When you tergiversate, you turn your back on something to which you were previously loyal and become a deserter or a renegade. When tergiversate denotes the desertion of a religious faith or creed, it is synonymous with apostatize, A-P-O-S-T-A-T-I-Z-E. Tergiversation means the act of desertion, and the word usually applies to the abandonment of a cause, a party, or a religion. These words may also be used figuratively of language that is shifty and evasive, that does not take a firm stand. In this sense, Tergiversate is a synonym of equivocate, which means to speak in a subtle and evasive manner. And the noun tergiversation is a synonym of equivocation, which means a shifty or evasive statement, language that does not come straight to the point or take a firm stand. Let's review the 10 key words you've just learned. This time, I'm going to give you two words, and you decide if they are synonyms or antonyms. Are you ready? Here we go. Saturnine and sanguine are... Antonyms. Saturnine, word 12 of level 10, means having a gloomy, sullen, or somber appearance or disposition. Sanguine means confident, cheerful, hopeful, optimistic. Conversationalist and dipnosophist are... Synonyms. A dipnosophist is an adept conversationalist, especially one who enjoys conversing at the table. Indestructible and frangible are... Antonyms. Frangible means breakable, fragile, frail, delicate, 
easily damaged or destroyed. Doubtful and apodictic are Antonyms Apodictic means absolutely certain, necessarily true, proved or demonstrated beyond a shadow of a doubt. To whisper and to fulminate are Antonyms To fulminate means to explode, especially to explode with invective and denunciations, to shout forth condemnation and censure. To lacerate and to scarify are Synonyms To scarify means to wound the feelings of, make cutting remarks about, distress by criticizing sharply. Quotidian and hebdomadal are Well, not exactly antonyms, but definitely not synonyms. Quotidian, word 20 of level 9, means daily, recurring every day or pertaining to every day. Hebdomadal means weekly, pertaining to a week or seven-day period. To digress and to divagate are Synonyms. To divagate means to wander, ramble, or drift about, hence to digress. Iatrogenic and pathological are Antonyms. Pathological means pertaining to or caused by disease. Iatrogenic means caused by medical examination or treatment. Loyalty and tergiversation are Antonyms. Tergiversation means desertion, specifically the act of deserting something to which one was previously loyal, such as a cause, a party, or a religious faith. That concludes the review for this section.